Welcome, and thank you for viewing this video on how to use the Fatality and Injury Reporting System tool, or FIRST, to perform systemic analysis. The video includes seven sections that address different aspects of FIRST and systemic analysis. You may complete the entire presentation from start to finish, or skip around and view specific sections. FIRST is a web-based tool developed by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, to query motor vehicle crash data from various databases. The first of these databases is the Fatality Analysis and Reporting System, or FARS, which contains data on all fatal crashes in the United States. The National Automotive Sampling System General Estimates System, or NASGES, and the Crash Report Sampling System, or CRIS, contain data from nationally representative samples of police reported crashes of all severities. CRIS replaced NASGES in 2016. It contains data from 60 selected areas across the U.S., chosen to create a nationally representative probability sample from all the police reported crashes that occur annually. FIRST can query 15 years of data from these databases. There is a one to two year lag on the most recent data due to data processing. FIRST can be a powerful tool for conducting systemic safety analysis. You can use it to gather the data for examining local, statewide, and national crash trends. You can then use this data for systemic analysis to identify focus crash types, facility types, and risk factors. You can also use it to inform and analyze safety investments, especially systemic safety improvements. The next section provides an overview of the systemic process, followed by helpful hints on how to query first to support systemic analysis. The systemic safety analysis process starts with identifying focus crash types, focus facility types, and risk factors as shown here. This section provides an overview of the systemic process. For more details, refer to FHWA's Systemic Project Selection Tool and related training video in the Resources section at the end of this video. A focus crash type typically represents the greatest number of severe crashes across the roadway system and provides the greatest potential to reduce fatalities and serious injuries. Crash type can be defined loosely such as intersection-related crashes or pedestrian crashes. It can also be defined more specifically, for example, sideswipe same direction or runoff road right crashes. First contains several data elements that can be helpful in identifying focus crash types, including crash type, first harmful event, intersection, involving a roadway departure, involving a rollover, involving a pedestrian, and manner of collision. You will learn how to obtain these variables in a later section of this video. A focus facility type is typically one on which the focus crash type most frequently occurs. Facility types can be defined loosely, as in horizontal curves or local roads, or precisely, as in four-leg urban signalized intersections or two-lane rural undivided highways. FIRST contains several data elements that can be helpful in identifying focus facility types, including intersection, interstate, relationship to the road, roadway function class, rural-slash-urban, trafficway ownership, trafficway route signing, and work zone. A crash risk factor is a characteristic of the roadway, environment, road user, or vehicle that is associated with the locations where the target crash type occurs. Examples include traffic control type, time of day, and driver age. There are numerous variables and related data filters in FIRST that can help identify risk factors. Some examples include day of week, first harmful event, involving speeding, light condition, roadway surface conditions, speed limit, trafficway descriptions, and vehicle body type. 
This section provides a few helpful tips on querying FIRST to support systemic analysis. For more general information on how to use FIRST to query data, please refer to NHTSA's instructional videos and documentation, which can be found in the panel on the right side of the FIRST interface. FIRST provides information on various factors related to the crash, including the roadway, vehicles, and people involved. This allows you to explore both infrastructure and behavioral factors in the analysis and gain a more complete understanding of the crash contributing factors. For instance, you can access crash level details such as crash location, crash date, and site-specific characteristics from the Crashes tab. Systemic analysis typically focuses on data at the crash level, using data for the number of fatal and injury crashes. But the Crashes tab does include variables for select vehicle and person level factors. For more details related to the vehicles and people involved in crashes, you can use the other tabs at the top of the tool. Vehicles, people, drivers, occupants, pedestrians, and pedal cyclists. It is important to note the difference between querying at the crash level and at, for example, the people level. A query of fatal crashes will return the number of crashes involving at least one fatality. On the other hand, a query of people involved in fatal crashes will return the total number of persons involved, including other vehicle occupants. Because of this, the options in the Select Fatality and or Injury menu differ slightly between the different querying tabs. Using the Select Time Frame menu, you can choose one or more years of interest. Selecting multiple years is common in the systemic approach, as it provides more data for analysis. Just be aware of changes in data elements or definitions over time, as this can impact your analysis. Use the Select State or Region menu to filter for states or NHTSA administrative regions. Once you select a state, you can also select one or more counties or cities within the state. However, you cannot select both counties and cities in the same query due to potential overlapping boundaries. In the Filter Your Selection menu, you can refine the data included in your query. The list of data elements is dependent on the tab you selected at the top of the tool. For example, if you are interested in vehicle or people level details beyond what is included in the Crashes tab, then you can use the Vehicles or People tabs. If you want to look at a specific group of crashes, such as pedestrian crashes, then you can use the filter for Involving a Pedestrian. Keep in mind that this filter will return all people involved in the crash, including drivers, passengers, or bicyclists, unless you select one of the tabs to limit the results to a specific category of road user. In other words, to show data pertaining only to pedestrians, select the Pedestrians tab and then use the Involving a Pedestrian filter. Consider using the various filters within these menus to examine crashes from different perspectives, such as guardrail crashes with and without impaired drivers, and the differences in pedestrian crashes between urban and rural areas. This begins to show the effect of certain characteristics or factors on crashes. If you selected the vehicles, drivers, or occupants tabs at the top of the tool, first includes one extra menu, the Select Vehicle Make and Model menu. You can use this menu to specify one or more vehicle model years, makes, and models to further filter the data. Finally, the Build Your Reports menu is used to design how the results of the query will be presented. Use this menu to select the format and data elements included in the query output. It is important to note that any filters selected in the Filter Your Selection menu will affect the data shown in the Build Your Reports results. That filter can be included as one of the data elements in the Build Your Reports menu, but that is not required. There are three format options at the top of the Build Your Reports menu. Use the Table option to generate a matrix that presents the data output for the query according to the data elements assigned to the rows and columns of the table. Use the Univariate Graph option to generate a bar graph displaying the query results for one data element. 
use the panel graph option to generate a series of bar graphs displaying the query results for two data elements. Tables and graphs can be downloaded for insertion into reports or for further manipulation in spreadsheet software tools. Clicking on any of the cells in the table output will generate a map of the associated crash locations. Mapping crash locations within FIRST can also be an important tool to determine risk factors related to roadway characteristics. For example, after querying FIRST for all fatal crashes involving a roadway departure, you can click on any cell in the output to map the crash location. Note that once the map is generated, you need to select the years you would like to map using the Layers menu on the left side of the screen. Once you have mapped the crashes, you can apply local knowledge about your roadway system to consider variables that are not contained in the first database, such as lane width, shoulder width, and condition of signs and markings. You can then examine the focus facility type to see if other locations exhibit the characteristics you noted at the fatal crash locations. Note that the mapping feature is only available for queries built using the Crashes tab and can only be accessed through the Table option on the Build Your Reports menu. The following sections of the video will walk through some brief examples of how to use FIRST to conduct systemic analysis. For the first example, we will use FIRST to answer the following question. What is a potential focus crash type for multiple vehicle crashes in Tuscaloosa County, Alabama. We will begin by building our query using the Crashes tab and will focus on fatal motor vehicle crashes. Under the Select Time Frame menu, let's assume the default time frame of 2015 to 2019. Under the Select State or Region menu, select a state and populate the state and county fields with Alabama and Tuscaloosa, respectively. We will not filter any data elements under the Filter Your Selection menu because we want to query all fatal crashes in Tuscaloosa County to determine the focus crash type. Finally, using the Build Your Reports menu, we will pick the report type and data element we want to use to examine the focus crash type. In this case, we will use the univariate graph since we will only be examining one data element, manner of collision, for determining crash type. If you're not sure what options exist under a given data element, remember that you can scroll back up to the Filter Your Selection menu and expand that data element to examine it further. We will drag the default data element, Crash Date Year, out of the Univariate Graph Value panel on the right and back to the Data Elements panel on the left. Then, scroll down to find the Manner of Collision data element and drag it over to the Univariate Graph Value panel on the right. Click the green Submit button at the bottom of the tool to run the query. The output is generated in a separate browser tab. Note that the most common manner of collision in Tuscaloosa County was not collision with motor vehicle in transport. However, since we are looking for the focus crash type for multiple vehicle crashes, head-on is the highest number of multiple vehicle crashes. So, one focus crash type for multiple vehicle crashes in Tuscaloosa County, Alabama might be head-on crashes. For the second example, we will continue exploring Tuscaloosa County. Now we want to know the potential focus facility type for the focus crash type, head-on crashes. Return to the first interface. Note that all the previous selections remain. We will keep most of them the same, making a few changes to now explore focus facility types. Under the Filter Your Selection menu, expand the Manner of Collision data element and select Head-on since that is the focus crash type. Now our query will only return crashes that match the focus crash type. Scroll down to the Build Your Reports menu. Remove Manner of Collision from the panel on the right and replace it with Roadway Function Class, the data element we will use to determine the focus facility type. Click Submit and examine the results.
Principal arterial, other, is the facility type with the most head-on crashes, so it could be one of the focus facility types. Our third and final example will demonstrate how to identify potential crash risk factors for a chosen focus crash type and focus facility type. Returning to the first interface, expand the Roadway Function Class Data Element in the Filter Your Selection menu and select Principal Arterial Other. Note that the Manner of Collision Data Element still has our Focus Crash Type selected. Now our queries will only return crashes that match our Focus Crash and Facility Types. At this point in the systemic analysis process, creativity comes much more into play. We want to explore the available data elements to see if any are overrepresented factors for the focus crash type and facility type. This process can involve trial and error, though local knowledge can inform the process and direct you to likely candidates for crash risk factors. You can go about exploring crash risk factors in several different ways. One would be to select different data elements using the univariate graph output, as we did to determine the focus crash and facility types. For example, let's take a look at time of day, daytime slash nighttime. Note that over 50% of the queried crashes occurred at night, which is more than we would generally expect given typical traffic volumes. We can explore this further by examining the light condition data element. Returning to the first interface, we can now use the table report type to examine two data elements at the same time selecting the time of day, daytime slash nighttime, and light condition data elements. Examining the results, five of the eight crashes that occurred at night were in dark, not lighted conditions. Time of day and lighting condition could be crash risk factors for our focus crash type and facility type. A crash tree is a visual representation of crashes, where each branch represents a variable of interest. They are helpful for identifying or exploring focus facility types and crash risk factors. This crash tree continues with the Tuscaloosa County examples and shows that crashes on county-owned roads occur most frequently on rural roads during dark conditions with no lighting. These findings might inform your selection of focus facility type or crash risk factors. You can use FIRST to generate data to make crash trees such as these. Refer to the companion video included in the resources list for specific techniques on developing and interpreting crash trees. There are several data tools and resources available to help you use FIRST to conduct systemic analysis, as shown here. Visit the related web links to access the resources. The first resource listed here is FIRST, discussed throughout this video. Consult the additional resources available within the FIRST interface for more information on using the tool. For more information on the FARS, NAS GES, and CRIS databases, visit their respective web pages. For more information on the systemic safety analysis process, refer to FHWA's Systemic Safety Project Selection Tool. This guide describes the detailed process for selecting focus crash types, focus facility types, and risk factors. For more information on crash trees and how to create them, watch the companion how-to video, FHWA's Crash Tree Diagram Tool, Developing and Using Crash Trees. Additionally, NHTSA continues to improve the functionality of FIRST. For up-to-date guidance, including specific sample queries for each section of the tool, refer to the resources built into the right panel of the FIRST interface. Technical assistance is available through the FHWA Roadway Safety Data Program to help address questions about the data and analysis methods used to implement the systemic approach to safety management. Visit the link on this slide to access the FHWA RSDP Technical Assistance website. Thank you for your interest in NHTSA's FIRST resource and its application in the systemic approach to safety management. We hope you've gained a better understanding of FIRST and how it can be used with the systemic approach to inform the selection of focus crash types, focus facility types, and potential risk factors.